Welcome to the Justice in Heels podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Hayward, and I'm thrilled to have you join us for season two. In this season, we focus on sharing stories and exploring strategies that empower those in the legal field to not just survive, but thrive in their careers. So, whether you're a seasoned lawyer, a fresh graduate navigating the legal landscape, or just someone curious about the world of law, Season 2 of this podcast is your go-to source for inspiration and support. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Justice in Heels podcast. Today I have one of the guests that I also had the pleasure of interviewing in my very first season, Nicolene Skuman with me. Nicolene, how are you doing today? Thank you again for having me and I'm well, thank you. How are you doing today? I am excited for this podcast and I'm excited that it's weekend. I think like a lot of us are experiencing some end of the year um, burnout. Absolutely. Um, I, I can agree with you on that. And for those of us with, with young kids, it's also school holidays, which mean the um, manic schedules of managing little person's schedules alongside everything else has also calmed down a little bit. And I think we are all feeling the year in fatigue um, set in. So hopefully we can recharge a little bit over the weekend. Amazing. So let's jump in. So firstly, today we are going to speak about a very interesting course that I also had the pleasure of doing, which is legal project management. So Nicolene, for those of the those listeners that do not know what legal project management is, what is it and how is it different from normal project management? Legal project management or LPM for short is essentially the um, field where we take traditional project management tools, tips, and methodologies, and we apply it to legal matters. Now, here it's important for us to see or to understand what legal matters entail. And I challenge all the listeners to think as broadly as possible. We're thinking of drafting instructions. That could be a legal matter a litigious matter or a dispute matter or matter relating to a dispute between parties, even an unopposed situation such as a divorce may be seen as a legal matter. And what we then do is we teach attorneys and support staff, even sometimes advocates, how to take those tips, tools and methodologies and apply it to their legal matters so that their matters run more efficiently and more smoothly, and essentially applying it to the legal matter, that's the key difference. Okay, very interesting. So secondly, can you tell us how big is this course in South Africa already? Uh, Are there a lot of attorneys who have started this course or not really yet? As a jurisdiction in South Africa, we are a little behind in terms of embracing legal project management, not only for its academic value and for its skill development value, but also its career value. And I'll get to that in a moment. Overseas, we are actually seeing, and I saw just a few days ago on LinkedIn, someone advertising a position of a legal project manager in England with a really attractive salary package attached to it. So we are seeing overseas that this is actually a career path where many attorneys or um, persons working in attorneys firms are really leveraging. So there we're a little behind. Let's admit that many of the larger firms are starting to create these positions, but it's not being advertised as widely as we may see in other jurisdictions. In South Africa, the course is really Uh, taking off. Uh, For the three years that I've held the exclusive license from the International Institute of Legal Project Management to present this um, groundbreaking training, we actually started with more non-practicing attorneys taking the course. And now we are seeing how more 
candidate attorneys and practicing attorneys and even advocates are starting to take the course and applying it to their practices. So I'm really happy to see that the practicing environment is starting to open themselves up and embracing this and to see the advantages it can hold in a practicing environment as much as the non-practicing environment and the commercial space has already seen the advantages. Amazing. So, I mean, you've just mentioned that Canada attorneys, advocates, and then other legal practitioners take this course. But I know you told me that there's also an option for support staff like paralegals, legal secretaries, and the likes to actually also complete this course. So can you tell us a bit more about the difference between the LPM for legal practitioners and the LPM for support staff? Great. So from a International Institute of Legal Project Management point of view, there are two international certifications available when you successfully complete the course with us and you submit um, acceptable case studies. So there's a practical test involved in the course. And then once you are done, if you are working in a law firm and you hold a legal qualification, a LB in South African terms, for example, you would qualify to be certified as a legal project practitioner or a LPP for short. That certification lasts you for three years. It's direct with the uh, Institute and every three years you have to renew that. But it opens you up as an attorney to international networking, to becoming part of like-minded um, attorneys and advocates around the world and to exchange information that way. For support staff, we have the Legal Project Associate Certification. Now, essentially, it's the same course material. You get to complete a different type of case study. Uh, we focus more on a supportive role as opposed to the actual execution of the legal matter, which obviously an attorney or a candidate attorney would, would uh, ultimately embark upon in their career. So the support... Um, uh, requirements are less cumbersome and that certification is actually lifetime certification and you are also included in the international community and I think it allows you to better support your um, fee earner in other words your attorney or your advocate as the case may be your legal consultant in the law firm context or in the legal department context it allows you to speak the same language, particularly if both of you have done the course and you are certified or accredited, then it allows you to work succinctly, to communicate better and to deal with issues and crises that inevitably arise in our industry in a much more constructive way. So that's really the difference between the two. Thank you for explaining that. So I've got just, I think everybody can see that it's a super valuable course and it's something that can be beneficial to any person in the legal field and any person who has a legal firm. So I want to ask you, Nikoli, why did you decide to do the legal project management course? And why did you decide to become one of the presenters of the course? So um, many years ago, when when I was trained, um, the the trainer that previously held the South African training license actually offered to to train um, myself and the legal team that works with us. And it was on site. It was before COVID, so on site training was was still the norm back then. And all of us just had this complete um, mind shift in how we viewed our daily tasks, how we viewed how we interacted with our clients, um, how we executed our work. And, and it honestly, it really happened unexpectedly. And the course was offered to us in an unexpected way. So we didn't, to be honest, we didn't go out and I didn't go out looking for it. But one of the great awarenesses that I think came out of all of it for all of us was really that many of us are doing a lot of 
project management as attorneys. We don't call it that. We don't even know that that's what we are doing. But having this awareness that some of the things are already in place is such a great validation. And also it helps you then to say, okay, I'm doing some of it. Why don't I learn how to do all of it? And to be open to the advantages that it can unlock for me. So I think for us, our relationships just went to a greater level internally in our firm, the way in which we were interacting with one another. And we've really, when I say we've never looked back, I honestly, I honestly believe that. Similarly, the relationship with our clients, with our other stakeholders, like our advocates and, and external parties or consultants that we were working with, all of this just went to a completely deeper more exciting, um, valuable exchange. And again, we've never looked back. So for me, I, I think if I had to consciously make the decision on whether or not to do it, I would say you do this course if you want to, if you are serious about work-life balance as an individual to learn how to work smarter, not harder, right? That's what the saying or how the saying goes. I think if you want to have more fruitful relationships with colleagues in your office, with your support staff, and even with your clients and your uh, third party contributors, your advocates, your consultants, if you want to have really valuable exchanges, this is what this course is gonna give you. But do expect to have a complete mind shift in how we do things. It's it, it doesn't mirror the traditional way in which we've practiced law. And that's why I think in jurisdictions where we are embracing other ways of rendering legal services, and as South Africa, we're always a little bit behind, I honestly think that um, that's why it's become a career choice overseas. And it will be a career choice in South Africa. Even if it's not today, it will come. And for those of us that embrace it, I think you've got more time for yourself and you've got more time to just be present when you're working on a matter. We need to stop this sausage factory where we churn things out quickly and we don't think about it. And I mean, even the LPC warns us even if we become experienced, don't listen with half an ear when you take an instruction. We need to give that love and attention to each and every matter. And we can only do that if we have enough time and energy to do that. And this really helps us do that. Thank you so much for sharing your story and how you actually went into the field. Um, and I totally agree with you, like work-life balance is so important. And I think it's also something that's becoming more and more important. We're not in those days where you can only, especially women, can only be a career woman or you can choose to only be a wife and only be a mother. Like we are very um, fortunate to be in an era where we can get to do, to have the career and to have the family. And like you said, it's just about managing that work-life balance and it's about planning. So my next question to you is, you've mentioned um, like the time management and that you also improved your communication and your relationship with your staff and with your clients. What other skills are you trying to actually um, address by presenting this course? I think the first one that comes to mind has to be communication. Um, there's, a, there's a profane saying about communication and the problems it, it causes if we communicate badly, which of course we're not going to repeat on, on this podcast. But um, jokes aside, communication is something I think that all of us as human beings can, can be better at. Uh, unfortunately, as attorneys, although we are often described as worksmiths 
And, and when I say attorneys, I actually mean legal practitioners in the more inclusive sense, right? Advocates, practicing, non-practicing, and so on. And the point is we are often criticized for not reporting to a client or not answering the question. Um, and that creates a lot of friction and frustration between us and our clients, uh, potentially even between colleagues and so on. And, and, and I think that's something we really need to change. We are in an era where we are, we, we are actually able to be connected all the time. I'm not suggesting that's a good idea. I think we need to have boundaries, but we have um, the ability to contact or be in contact with someone in a much more real-time way than ever before. And we are not using our tools correctly. We are sending emails, for example, which have to be scrolled down on three, four, five times, when potentially it's better to put all of that in a letter and to put it in as an attachment. Or we are sending long instant messages with the same scrolling problem, where it, it can cause frustration to see, okay, so what's your point? So I think either we are over communicating or we're not using our platforms correctly or we are not communicating at all or that's what the receiver of the information feels like. And that's if we chisel down any issues, that's really at the core of many of the issues from a complaints point of view, from a team point of view, it all boils down to ineffective communication. So this course focuses a lot on communication. It focuses on challenging you to um, look at your own growth and development as a legal practitioner, uh, from a skill set point of view, but also from a leadership point of view, from a team member point of view. People call those soft skills. I think that's so inept. We should call it essential skills. How we show up. Not that we show up how we show up is often more important than if we showed up at all. So I think those are the two key issues. And of course, planning, planning and, and looking at what are we doing? Have we identified the problem correctly? And most of us, particularly more experienced professionals may think, of course, I, I, I plan properly. Of course, I know what I'm doing. But do we know why the client wants to, to do what they say they want to do, what motivates them. And often we don't ask those questions at the outset and then something turns out differently than the client expected and there's a complete breakdown and we don't understand why that happened. So it teaches us to really look at legal problems from a client's perspective, from the expectations perspective, from our perspective, from the legal perspective, and then to really look at, is this really the best course of action? Not just accept that the client says, we have to do this. To question, is this the best solution to the legal problem at hand? And if this is, what can potentially go wrong? And if it does, what are we going to do about it? We don't think that far ahead in the um, initial phase. And often we don't communicate it's, it's sort of like a domino effect. We don't see where we're going. We don't think what can um, avoid that from going the way we hope it will go and what it will cost and how long it will take. We don't think of the negativities and we don't think about what we'll do if they arise. And then we don't communicate because we don't know what to do and we don't know what to say about it. So it's all a domino effect. And this course really teaches you around four simple pillars, how to navigate your way through it and how to be on top of things if they go wrong and how to communicate that. And ultimately, it's just a much calmer experience for everyone concerned. Uh, thank you so much for that. Sorry, my mic just, I don't know why, but like I muted myself <laughs> when I wanted to speak. So what are some of the feedback that you've received from people who have actually done this course? And I'm also going to share some of my feedback because I think it's like, it's one of the best things that I ever did because it's, it's, I especially enjoyed the planning part. 
because I'm somebody who likes to make lists and I'm one of those people who love to tick off everything from my to-do list. But then at the end of the day, it's not, I learned that it's not only about that list, that ticking off the list. There's a lot more that goes into planning. But what are some of the feedback that you've received from other people who've done this course? I think one of the stories that always has to stand out for me um, is a practitioner um, that did our course and uh, the motivation for doing the course was really because um, the experience was that the team, the legal team, um, couldn't work together that they couldn't speak to one another, that this person was going off on this tangent and that person was doing that. And they ended up being conflict and nothing ended up getting done. And everyone just, just on edge and angry all the time. And um, of course, I'm oversimplifying it to a large extent. And this course really assisted the lead team um, member who attended the course to go back into the organization and to say, this is how we are going to intake matters going forward. This is how we are going to communicate it through the rest of the organization. And this is how this, the methodologies that we are going to play book and we are going to look at implementing. So I think that one has to stand out for me that um, it was someone who's tried everything else, every, every book on teamwork, every motivational speech you could think of and really felt like, they were herding cats, for lack of a better word, and that they now have such a well-performing team. They were actually awarded in the organizational context for the best performing department last year. So that has to stand out for me. Then secondly, um, progressive organizations saying there must be a better way for us to avoid the wastage of many hours, um, not making ends meet. And I think economically speaking, we are all there right now. We are all seeing that the work is not as frequent as it used to be. Everyone is looking for ways to find more clients. Um, every law firm I've spoken to is in the same boat, big or small. And really looking at how do we work with what we have and really almost embracing that thinking of, you know, I think our grandmothers used to say, let's turn the scent over twice, you know, and really stretch our buck here. But really for the law firms to embrace that and to see not where can we cut costs and are we retrenching? I think that's a short-term solution, but really looking at how are we working? Are we working as effectively as possible? Are we avoiding wastage? How are we traveling to court? How long are we sitting there? Are our systems set up in such a way that we can actually get a little bit more out of what we are putting in? So I think holistically speaking, that is um, looking at the, the increase of, of profit without expending more resources, but really looking at how do we work with what we have and really make it work for us, less is more. Um, without needing to talk about job losses and that sort of thing. And those that particular firm has actually reported growth um, in this year when everyone else is saying we are struggling and we are feeling COVID now three years down the line. And that I thought was extremely insightful. Amazing. So when somebody buys the schools, what do they get? So tell us a bit more about the classes, how that works. Uh, what type of course material do you get access to? So the course is um, what we'll, we'll refer to as a hybrid course. The course is online. In other words, you get access to online material. You can work through the material. There are 15 modules that you have to work through. Then you go into a group with the other attendees. Um, we run our own open groups um, a couple of times a year. Uh, we are planning next year's uh, course dates for those that may be interested. And then we, we group you together with like-minded legal professionals. It's a mixed group, so it could be candidate attorneys, experienced or 
uh, junior attorneys, uh, advocates, practicing and non-practicing. So it's a mixed group. Sometimes there are even support staff included in our groups as well. I shouldn't forget to mention that. And we take a, um, a four-week, uh, five-week period, sorry, and we, we take the um, material, we span it over shorter, uh, more bite-sized pieces where I am then in attendance and I facilitate and share some additional insights, some practicalities, material that is not available in the online learning material. We also then work through some questions and we get to know each other a little bit and I give you three assignments to complete and one case study. So four in total, and we then put you through a competency online assessment as well to make sure that the basic theoretical principles are firmly um, conveyed and that you are able to take it back where you practice and make it your own. We also then um, delve into the personal development. We use the DISC assessment model um, in order to take you through some of your strengths and weaknesses. And we encourage all the participants to actually have themselves profiled. We do offer that as an additional service. And we do also offer additional support for those attendees that need that little bit extra on how do I take this home um, to my organization? How, how does this fit into what we do so we don't rock the boat, but we start to transition this into the organization and hopefully um, mushroom it out to others as well. And once you've attended all the uh, facilitation events, you've handed in your three assignments and your one case study, you've done the competency assessment, and I can see you've completed all 15 modules to qualify for the international accreditation either as a legal project practitioner, if you are in possession of a legal qualification and you're working in a law firm or legal department, and or, or you can qualify as the legal project associate. Both are international, makes you part of an international community. We have access to their resources, their templates, the symposium we have once a year, and the award ceremonies. And then everyone also takes home a workbook, which you can keep along with all the templates that we use that come from the International Institute and you are able to adapt to your organization or to your needs and you can make use of going forward. Fantastic. So my last question to you is, if somebody wants to do this course or they might have a question about the course, where can they reach you? Well, um, we offer a free um, LPM 101 session, which is available on our website at pocketadvisor.co.za. If you click on the programs tab, you'll be able to find our LPM course, more information about that, as well as see at the top of the page, the LPM 101 course, which gives you a bit of a sneak peek of what to expect, and it's completely free. So... And any, any additional information beyond that, um, anyone is welcome to contact me directly. The email address, address is info, spelled with an I, at pocketadvisor, one word, dot co dot za. Thank you so much for joining me today. I think there's a lot of people who are actually going to consider this course. And I look forward to actually doing one of your courses in the future again. Thank you so much for having me. And I really hope that I'll see more South African practicing attorneys and candidate attorneys uh, benefiting as much as the non-practicing attorneys have done already. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Justice in Heels podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, feel free to share it with your friends on social media and tag us. As this podcast has a legal element, just a quick disclaimer that all views expressed in this podcast are not necessarily the views of the firms, companies or brands that we are associated with. Until next time, goodbye.